people are saying they should be stopped at source. Why is this happening? We need to get more boats, more people out to stop it. But you're saying the opposite in a sense. Your argument is actually let more people come in, make it easier for them to do so. Why is that your argument? I think the UK has a slightly overinflated sense of its attraction to people seeking asylum. Actually, most people seeking asylum don't come here. The numbers that we're talking about are relatively small. These people have a... <laughs> That's a good one. That probably got something to do with the fact that the UK resides at the other side of Europe. Therefore, it'd be relatively a bit more difficult to traverse country after country to get to, you, to the UK, only to find yourself stuck in France unaware of whether or not you'd be able to actually get to the UK. So it kind of puts some off, but let's not forget when this migrant crisis first started, a mass group culminated at Cali, and there's quite a lot still there. So just because there isn't a relatively large number in terms of the amount of people that have managed to actually get into the UK and are accounted for, that doesn't mean that the UK isn't so quote unquote attractive. No. There's a lot of people at Cali, or in France anyway, that have the UK in mind, but just haven't been able to get here yet. So that's a bullshit argument. Right to seek asylum under the Geneva Convention, and they shouldn't have to risk their lives to do that. We're pushing... Why can't they seek it in France? Though? Well, you're talking concert. about the Dublin regulations, and there's all sorts of issues around the Dublin regulations. Um, it basically means that people... Countries like Greece and Italy, which are the first country in which people come into from outside of Europe, end up taking disproportionately far more people and we're taking disproportionately far fewer. We have... You notice how this woman never even answered the question that was just given to her. The question was, why can't these people remain refugees in France? And she dodged the question and started talking about how the mass majority of them end up staying in Greece and, and Italy. And in comparison, we haven't taken in that many, therefore we have a moral obligation. The question was, why can't they stay in France? You never answered that. And quite frankly, the fact that they won't stay in France just sums it up, to be honest. Even if they are refugees, which I beg to differ considering they're supposed to be Iranian, but even if they are, they're refugees in name only at this point. Because not only are they blatantly exploiting the fact that they are apparently refugees, every single country that they have traversed in order to end up in France and then, quote unquote, re risk their life to be picked up as they know they're going to be. Uh, each time they cross a border, the definition of a refugee or the label of a refugee was dripping off them, left them. And it became more and more apparent that they were just economic migrants. But nonetheless. A duty to step in. Not everybody wants to come here. I think we need to be really clear about that. And I'd rather we weren't calling them migrants. These people are almost certainly gonna have valid asylum claims. These people are almost certainly going to have valid asylum claims, according to her. So she didn't know for a fact this is an assumption. She assumes. She doesn't know for a fact, but yet you will see later on in this video that this woman uses what she currently doesn't know for a fact, but she uses it for a fact later on in order to fuel her temper, which is quite funny. <laughs> So they're asylum seekers rather than migrants. Um, we're, at the moment, we're pushing them into the hands... They're asylum seekers rather than migrants. I beg to differ. ...of the people traffickers. That's what the UK government is doing. We could stop this overnight if we... You know, we're a small charity. It's not up to us to write government policy. But if we set up an office in France, process people's valid, almost certainly valid asylum claims, and then <laughs> gave them safe passage, we'd stop this overnight. Well, let's go... Oh, we could stop this. We could also stop this by sending them back, but they won't do that. All of these conversations, all of these debates, all of this hysteria, all of this animosity, all of this so-called crises that we seem to keep seeing, all of these migrants, all of these refugees, it, none of it would matter. None of it would be a problem. None of it would be happening. We're over to Charlie Elphick now, the MP says, yes. there in Dover that's facing the brunt of a lot of people who are making these perilous channel crossings. What do you make of that suggestion then, that actually we should be setting up a better system to assess claims there in France because a lot of them may have genuine claims and then that would stop them trying to do this crossing? Well, I think it's an entirely irresponsible view. What it will do is encourage people to make dangerous journeys from conflict zones across the Mediterranean, across Europe, to come to Calais to try to make dangerous journeys across the English Channel. What we need to be doing is to be stopping migration at source. And that's what we're doing for our international aid budget. Over a billion pounds has been spent providing safe places near to conflict zones. 
and, and also uh, our work uh, with DFID, uh, with migration compacts, to try to encourage uh, countries to honour their international responsibilities. And we've got to remember, these migrants that we're talking about, these Iranians coming over in small craft, are in France. France is a safe country, and that's where they ought to be what making about those asylum claims, then? not you, trying to come here. You made several points there. I mean, one of which you said that what you're doing is trying to deal with it at source. Clearly not working, because they're still coming. So if it oh, well, then we might as well just let them continue coming over then. was working, they wouldn't be. And what about the points that, that you made that says, actually, you know, we are taking a disproportionately small amount of these asylum seekers, migrants, refugees, because... I'm getting sick of this argument. I mean, it's, it's not a competition. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know that the EU's got its fucking quota system and all the rest of it, but quite frankly, that quota system has been absolutely exploited at this point. This whole orchestrated migrant crisis, quote unquote, has turned into nothing but a tirade, an absolute shambolic facade. And yet our governments and their government, all the European governments, they all pretend it's something completely opposite to what it actually is. So I'm not going to waste my time listening to what this guy says. Let's get on to the women again. Humanitarian uh, and compassionate thing to do. The reason is that people making these crossings are, are caught in great danger. Men, women and children uh, could easily have a, a tragedy in the English Channel. 200 have arrived so far. We've been very lucky. The uh, only way of stopping it, history tells us, is to make sure that they can't have uh, hope of successfully entering the country. That is the best deterrent and that's why I'm saying we ought to recall uh, our, our border uh, vessels to form a modern Dover patrol to work with the French to make sure that these crossings can't be successful. Well, let's on that note just go over to Bridget because Bridget, I mean, you know, we heard you gasp then when you heard what Charlie Elphick was saying. I mean, Charlie called me irresponsible. I think that's deeply irresponsible. I don't think we have a migrant crisis here. I think we have a moral crisis. Oh. The way the government is dealing with this issue is appalling. These people are in need and we need to be helping them. I come from Folkestone. How do you know that these people are in need? There's a glaring issue with this migrant crisis which was apparent for a long time before the UN Migration Compact was signed and that was that the migrants that we were seeing were being treated as refugees. They were going through the motions of, being, of what a refugee would do. The media was treating them as if they were refugees but not calling them refugees. It was very strange, the blurring of the lines as I've said before. So how do you know that the people that are coming over in the Mediterranean Sea are in fact, as you say, people in need, fleeing, whatever. How do you well, how do you know? How can you decipher? Because quite frankly, it's been apparent for a long time that a lot of the Africans, for example, that we've been seeing, have been fleeing their poverty and their and their shitty life conditions in sub Saharan Africa. Now, granted, I would probably do the same if I was them, but that's not the point. They're hardly in grave danger, they're hardly in desperate need of fleeing where they came from. And the same could be said for the Iranians, quite frankly. <laughs> you know what I mean? The big difference between that and leaving a war ravaged country. And even then, again, why can't they stay in France? You're not telling me that each and every single one of these people have family here, because this is the new bullshit tactic they keep using. First they were all children and they all had family here, and now they're all people that have family here. We can't all have fucking family here. We don't have that many Muslims in the UK yet. And during the First World War, when Germany invaded Belgium and people were displaced as like God. flower girls welcoming them. Big difference between then and now. For one, our country is near enough crammed at this point and the more you let in, the more will come. It's, it's considering that there's this completely lackadaisical approach to allowing the continuation of people just jumping on boats and coming over here. And every time, if, if these people had their way, every single time they saw a boat coming over here, then by all means, on you come in, and all you do is incentivize more. The difference between then and now is the people that we took in during World War One and World War Two were actually refugees. For the most part, the people that we see now are just chancy bastards. No offense, don't really curse them in that regard because some of them may very well be refugees, but the most of them are not, and that's a fact. What has changed? When did we become so hard? This is an absolute disgrace. But what about the fact there that Charlie Offit was making the point about, you know, tackling it at source, the international development aid that's trying to go into making sure that, you know, there's more stability, I sure. guess, in people's countries so they don't want sure. to make this in the first place? Because by allowing people to come in, aren't we daring and then encouraging more people to take this step in the first place? Yes. You don't leave your home and family unless the push factors are enormous. That I agree. An absolute bullshit lie. Absolutely, we should be doing more to help people to stay where they are if that's what they want to do. But if, if that's what they want to do. Listen to the way she's wording things, that's what they want to do. 
you know, you don't have to do that, but if you want to, by all means, we'll help you stay there. People are seeking asylum in this country. We have a duty to help them. Charlie, do you believe that the government uh, is handling... This is ludicrous. They do not have a right to claim asylum. They pissed that right away when they left France. This well, Sajid Javid is back at his desk today, but Gavin Williamson has said, well, hang on, you can have any part of our military might to help you, the Navy, the RAF, the Army. Do you think he is doing a good job? A couple of hundred over the last few weeks, haven't we? There are bigger issues at stake when we look at other figures involving people who are here who shouldn't be. Possibly more than 600,000 foreigners here overstaying their visas, maybe in the UK. The Home Office has admitted they've no idea if 600,000 people are overstaying their visas, whether they've actually gone home. Is there something wider here that needs to be done about how we control the people that are here, whether they're legal or illegal? Well, that's why I've been calling for a, a visa uh, waiver system like they have in the United States to help boost our borders budget and to make sure that we know where people are so that when they overstay, we know where to start looking to, to find them. I think visa overstaying is a particular issue that needs to be tackled and needs to be dealt with. Uh, and also, we need to make sure that our immigration system is working in the right way so we attract the brightest and the best from around the world and people with the skills we need, but we make sure we have appropriate controls. I mean, Bridget, that is the po point for a lot of people of why they voted for Brexit. They wanted to take back border control. They were concerned about some of the scale of immigration. Mm. When you talk as you were about the Second World War and 250,000 mm. refugees being taken in, people think, are you saying we should take 250,000? Should we take 250,000 every year, every month? As you say, we are facing a huge... In the coming years, there's going to be a lot more people yeah, on are. the move. Where do what the fuck does that mean? Now, I know with the UN Migration Compact being signed, the sadistic, but in the background, the sadistic aspect of it has clearly opened the gateway to migration in the future that's legal, mass immigration, and they've they've added numerous new reasons as to why people may in, in, in the coming years flee their home. But for these people to sit there and say that, well, we know for a fact that there's going to be a lot more immigration in the future. What do you mean by that? What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> do we stop? We have to do what's right. Where do we stop? Well, I don't think everybody wants to come here. I don't think people want to leave. No, I don't, sorry, but uh, you, you, we, this is scaremongering. We don't we're know about it. How is it scaremongering? But no, this is what people said about when the, we're, we're, there, and there's a big about difference. EU there's a big difference. And, and freedom big, of movement. People big, said no, they won't big, want to come. And then too many big, people did. Well, and it upset that is a people. totally different issue. It is a different what, no, argument. What, you're listen, relying on psychology there. Let me there. speak, please. Of it's course. A totally, well, you, you weren't. It's a totally different issue. We're talking about asylum seekers and we're talking about the Geneva Convention. Under the, Brexit has got nothing to do with the Geneva Convention. It doesn't, whether we're in or out, that doesn't change. Our duty to accept people with genuine asylum claims does not change. Bridget, when would you stop? Also regarding the Geneva Convention and the refugees in question, the position of removal to other countries in the EU is governed by regulation which comes into force in September 2003 known as Dublin II. This sets out criteria for determining which member state is responsible for examining any asylum claim made within the EU. One of the main criteria is the point of entry into the EU unless other factors such as family unity or existing resident documents are an issue. The member state into which the person first arrived from outside the EU will be responsible for determining any claim for asylum made within 12 months. After that time, responsibility lies the last member state where the asylum seeker has lived continuously. So if you are a genuine refugee, your claim will not be rejected on the basis that you did not claim asylum in the first country you came to, but you may be passed from one country to another before your claim is determined and the effect of the 2004 Act that it is extremely difficult for an asylum seeker to challenge removal from the UK to a country deemed to be safe. Immigration rules state, however, that the Secretary of State will only remove an asylum seeker to a third country if there is clear evidence that their country concerned will admit the person. This will be so if the person has arrived in the UK via another safe country and had an opportunity at the border of or within the country to claim asylum. The mere fact that the person has passed through another country does not necessarily mean there was an opportunity to claim asylum. If an agent planned the journey and the person was hidden in a vehicle for the duration of it, for example, there was unlikely to be any realistic opportunity for the person to approach the authorities. Uh-huh. <laughs> so you can bang on about your Geneva Conventions and your Amendment Acts all you want, but the point remains the same, that uh, unless there was a clear reason as to why these people could effectively have their refugee status uh, passed over into responsibility of the UK, there was none of that. Therefore, they have to stay in France. Of those points, but it it well, looks like. A, sorry, well, go on. You, say say your point. 
Can, can, I, can, I just make, can I just make the point that uh, what, what I'm, we're hearing is that uh, Bridget believes in entirely uncontrolled immigration and doesn't believe we should have sign, any, kind of border force, any kind of border control No, Charlie, whatsoever. you're mixing, you're think, doing the same thing, me, it's a finish, false narrative. Finish. No, it's not a false narrative. No, false narrative. This woman, like every other person that seems to proclaim to be part of a charity or is in favour of open borders, they are partly responsible for the misconception that is every single migrant that we see arriving in European territories is in fact a refugee when they're not refugees. They're not just because they proclaim they're here to seek asylum. That doesn't mean that they are. But they're treated as such and then they're allowed in, barely ever sent home. She is the one that's conflated the two. Border force, any kind of border control. No, Charlie, whatsoever. you're mixing. You're doing the same thing. Me, it's a false finish. narrative. Let no, me, I'm sorry. I'm not going to no, let, let you make let this false let me make my point. I'm listening. She's not saying uncontrolled immigration. She's saying I'm not those saying uncontrolled immigration. Should well, I'm not sure what border in. controls. I'm not sure what border controls she believes in. She doesn't sound like she believes in any border controls at all. Well, that's just ridiculous, Charlie. You're being rude, and that's unnecessary. The response. The responsible thing to do is to do what we're doing, which is to provide help you are near conflict zones. You are being irresponsible. You and your government dangerous journeys. And I think have a moral that the encouragement crisis. of people like Bridget Fuck to off. make these dangerous journeys across Europe is the wrong thing to do. It ends up like the Calais jungle and the Calais migrant magnet that we saw some years ago. We can't have a return to the bad old days. And that's She's not saying I'm controlled point. immigration. She's she goes on a wee rant there. He's in entirely uncontrolled immigration and doesn't believe we should have any kind we're of border force. About, we're talking about asylum. We're talking about asylum. So you should, all of a sudden she knows for a fact that these people are coming over here to seek asylum. Yet at the very beginning of this video, as I pointed out, she's, it's most likely that they'll, be, they'll have genuine asylum claims. So it's gone from most likely, more than likely, you know, an assumption to a definite. Uh-huh. <laughs> anyway, this video is too long. Um, apologies. Peace.